What we're studying here is how blood clots form in the blood vessel of a zebrafish. Just here you're going to see a blood clot develop. My name is Tim Chico. I'm a consultant cardiologist and I spend half of my time seeing patients with heart diseases, that's heart failure, angina and other problems to do with the cardiovascular system. The other half of my time I spend as a researcher in this lab and I use zebrafish to try and study the ways that new heart muscle and new blood vessels develop. Although it might be surprising that I use zebrafish to try and understand what's happening in my human patients, the same pathways which made my heart develop, made your heart develop, are the genes which switch on heart development in zebrafish. And actually at that very basic fundamental level, we share far more common mechanisms uh, than you might imagine. One of the fantastic advantages of the zebrafish is we've got libraries of, of millions of compounds which might be the next best drug, but we don't know what effect they might have. What we can do is very quickly screen thousands of these molecules on zebrafish and see whether they have an effect, of, for example, on blood vessel development. And if it does, then we've got a, a candidate, a target, if you like, which we might be able to develop and use in human patients. To tell you about some examples from my lab, some of my students are switching off genes in the zebrafish, and this is causing blockages of arteries. Now, blocked arteries are the commonest cause of death in this country, and so what we're very interested in is how the blood vessels grow around the blockage to restore the blood flow, and that's something which we know is important in humans, and if we could switch it on more in humans, would cause them to live longer and survive better after a heart attack. So one of the difficulties in understanding how hearts develop, how blood vessels develop, is it's very difficult to see it happening in either a human or indeed any other animal model. The zebrafish is uniquely well qualified because they're transparent and from the very earliest stages of development we can see the heart develop, we can see blood vessels develop and we can also change genes, switch them on or off in order to see what their contribution is to those processes. This is again a living uh, zebrafish uh, larvae the green cells are the lining of the blood vessels and the red is the blood and nothing's been done to it apart from putting it on a microscope but you can see we can get really detailed 3D reconstructions of the blood vessels and you just can't do this in any other organism. So what gets us out of bed in the morning is the hope that we will make a breakthrough which will lead to a treatment which improves the well-being and lifespan of patients with cardiovascular diseases and I think that's true for all medical researchers. In 10 years time if I can look back and say that we've made one small advance which has made one person live a bit longer or one person feel better, that for me would be enough. But of course cardiovascular diseases are so common that the likelihood is that any treatment benefit is likely to improve the lives of millions of people worldwide and that's what we're aiming for.